Akihabara is a must for pretty much anybody that plays video games, but the veteran collector with spare time should take a train to the suburbs. You'll have to ride a few buses and maybe walk half a mile, but you'll score some great deals. Check out all of this stuff! Some of Nintendo's biggest franchises debuted on the Famicom Disk System. You can get The Legend of Zelda or Metroid for 20 bucks a piece. To play them, buy the Famicom in the Disk System itself for 120 bucks, much cheaper than Super Potato. A CIB Famicom can retail for $200 in Akihabara. Meanwhile, this hard-off was selling a decent system for less than 70. The 3DO never took off in Japan and they've become quite a collector's item. This particular model is priced at 80 bucks. And I found a slim model at another shop for 50 bucks loose. It's impossible to find a PSVR anywhere, but you can readily locate a Virtual Boy for $150 CIB. Sometimes Hardoff will have American versions of games, like Mystic Quest for $20 and Super Scope 6 for $5. After scouring the games, I like to head over to the toys. I always find vintage 90s merchandise, never opened and usually in great condition. This showcase bursted with rare portables, like a Pokemon Center exclusive Game Boy Color for $250. Mega Drive didn't sell so well in Japan, and $70 for a loose Model 2 in Tokyo isn't absurd. A rare variant of the Sega Saturn, I regret not buying a CIB V Saturn for $120. The Japan-only standard white model, however, is a cheap $30. You might not have the luggage space, but for $400 you can purchase an unopened Millennium Falcon Lego set. At $200, the PC Engine shooter Terra Cresta 2 seems rather expensive, until you see it in Akihabara for twice the price. Yet a Battletoads cartridge at the same shop was outrageous at $160. If only the these copies of Metal Slug for the Neo Geo Pocket had been in the box. Together, they're more than a hundred bucks loose. You never know what you'll dig up in the junk section. I found True Lies on VHS. $300 for a PC Engine Duo R is a bit high for me, but it is in fantastic condition. Looking back, I probably should have bought this Sega CD unit for a hundred bucks. A fair price, especially for Tokyo. The hundred dollar Model 2 is also not bad. Castlevania 3 CIB is going for a hundred bucks. Meanwhile, $60 will get you Ninja Gaiden. Find the right hard off and you can save a lot of money on both systems and games. 30 bucks for an N64 is just right. So is 20 bucks for a Game Boy Pocket, and $5 for Secret of Mana or Donkey Kong Country is oh so sweet. You're never gonna beat 10 bucks for a CIB copy of Fire Emblem, and 40 bucks for a loose Famicom Edition Game Boy Advance SP is a steal. The Family Computer Network system hooked your 8-bit console up to the series of tubes we call the internet. It's useless now, but I think it's a good buy at 50 bucks. Mega Man Legends 2 can be a $60 game in America, but in Japan, it's 15 bucks. If I didn't already have a white PS2, I definitely would have picked up this pink slim model for $80. And at $300, this near-complete Neo Geo is a great price. All it's missing is the controller. And now, what I picked up. Rogue Squadron for the N64, and a ton of PS1 games. The arcade beat-em-up Warriors of Fate, the fifth entry in the Thunder Force series, Ray Storm, Mega Man X5 and X6, two CIB Game Boy games, Metroid 2 and Castlevania The Adventure, and rounding us out is Star Fox Assault for the GameCube. You're not going to find many rare games in the suburbs of Tokyo, though you will find common games and systems at drastically better prices than Akihabara. If you have a day to spare, visit a few hard-offs and gawk at what they have to offer. Thanks for watching, and mahalo!